welcome to Pure Hustle Podcast. I'm Mike. And this is Orlando. We have a special episode lined up. What do we have going on today? Yeah, so actually, we've got two episodes dropping for you today. So right now you're watching or listening to part one of our Bolo compilation. So as a special Christmas gift for you, we've gone <laughs> through the last year and looked at all of our Bolos that we've talked about for the year. Uh, what are some of the, the key things that we've been looking for? Uh, or that other people have told us to be looking for. Uh, so we've had so many of them that we couldn't fit them into just one episode, right? Yeah, yeah no, agreed. And we always want to say, do your research, right? Because what was relevant when we talked about it, even though it might have been a month ago, maybe isn't that relevant still. But pretty much all of them. I mean, I, I looked at some of them and they're still good to go. So hopefully this helps you when you're out sourcing at thrift stores or garage sales or maybe even doing some RA. That's right. So once again, this is part one of our Christmas Bolo special. Uh, so the first half of our Bolos that we went through for the year, there's some really great ones here. We hope you enjoy them. And then we hope you stick around and watch part two. And have a great holiday. Peace. Peace. Episode 29. Um, I, I want to hear your very descriptive Bolo. <laughs> this, this one, I think I've kind of already talked about, you know, we just did that Bolo compilation and I don't even remember if this was on there because I know I've talked about it in an episode before. Um, but puzzles, man. I'm telling you, sealed puzzles. Don't do the wrap or the open puzzles unless you really know for sure. No, don't do them. But a unless sealed... it's like some high end one that you've never seen. Okay, so and I know that you're at a place where you're getting like forty dollars profit off each item, but I can't tell you how many thrift stores I walk into with sealed puzzles that sell for on eBay consistently for like twenty to twenty four dollars. Really. And I'm picking them up for like two to three dollars. And are they? They're not like major brands either. I don't know puzzle brands. I just scan them. I use the eBay app. Scan I find it. I find that like puzzles with cats on them. So I don't. I, and almost that's not every, a bolo, by the way. But I've just noticed that cat puzzles. I'm I'm telling you. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the time. Maybe it's because it's close to Christmas time. Because my wife and I actually just did a puzzle. It was cool. We did one of those 3D, um, like a Harry Potter puzzle. Nice. We spent Christmas break doing that. It was a lot is that of fun. Like the Costco one. No, I don't know. They might have my Costco. I got this one at Barnes and Noble. Okay, okay. But, but anyways, I think I think when people are on break, like Christmas break is a time when people kind of sit down and do some puzzles. I don't know. So maybe it's just the timing of the year. But I've sold a lot of puzzles, and so no. I just think it's one of those things that people kind of pass on. So maybe don't. There's no no. There's money on puzzles. No, don't get me wrong. Like on Amazon, I've sold a ton of puzzles. Now the puzzle market isn't what it used to be. Mm -hmm. Like I remember. I remember last Q4, I bought a puzzle for, I want to say $5 at the thrift store, and I flipped it for like 80 bucks on Amazon in Q4. Nice. And it was one that no one else had, so I created my own Amazon listing, mm. and it sold. But what I will say about Amazon, about about puzzles, is that you just, you got to do the research on mm. it, though, because just picking up any puzzles, you no. might end up having a bunch of puzzles. Yeah. Because, you know, there's some puzzles right now that I've had for a long mm. time. Hey. Crack them open, man. Get to <laughs> get to solving the puzzle. I gotta be it's still entertaining. My puzzles. <laughs> I don't know. All right, my bolo. Now mine's a little generic, but let's hear this very descriptive bolo. No, no, no. Mock shoes. Do you know what mock? Mock looks like the mock look on the boot. Mm -mm. Okay, so mock is like a slip on. Okay. Right. So you see Merrells that are just slip ons. Yeah. Okay. Or you seen L beans that are slip ons uh -huh. or Solomon shoes. Okay, so those brands, if you find them in mock and you you find them for less than ten dollars, my experience has been I even if they're in like bad shape, I mean if the sole's good, but like there's cosmetic wear, I can still sell those for at the least 30, hmm. at the most for like 60 to 70. Wow. And even if they're like if there's it's dirty and it's not clean, like especially now as we hit winter, like people like those mock shoes. Huh. So just something to think about. And there was this phase where I kept finding um, mocks constantly, Merrill mocks over and over again. And I remember I, I kept wanting to see how much I could get away with. Like, mm. how about this one? This looks really bad, but the sole's okay. Sold. Hmm. Sold. 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 I think I've sold every single pair of mock shoes I've ever purchased. That's crazy. It's like the Doc Martens that I sold that were so trashed and beat up. I thought, no way. Any I only bought them because I wanted to say I bought a pair of Doc Martens finally. Yeah. I bought them for like three dollars, and they still sold for like thirty, and they were trashed. Like sold bad too. Yeah, the whole thing like it was coming apart. Yeah, Doc Martens is one of those. Like 
People like the beat up look on ducks. I thought for sure someone was going to use it as like a Halloween costume. <laughs> maybe, maybe they did. Maybe. But you know, I've sold like docks for like over a hundred dollars that were just messed up, but people like that look. It's crazy. So that's an, our double bolo today. Boom. Mock boots, Doc Martens. Trash Doc Martens. And cat puzzles. And cat puzzles. Episode 31. Bolos. bolos. Okay. Speaking of bolos, it's time for our bolos. Do you got a good bolo for me? What uh, should I be looking out for, Orlando? I would say, and again, I, I'm trying to be more generic with the bolos because I'm trying to help everyone out. Mm. Like I feel like when we're too specific at times, like, you know, people like they don't they, like it's kind of like you have shutters like mm. you don't see everything else but if there's ever and i've kind of i always go on these sports themes if there's ever a team or a set of teams going to the playoffs mm. like those are the items you want to be looking for and whether it be basketball whether it be baseball whether and, and i think it's common sense but i will tell you like the chargers who left san diego which is really annoying that they left even though i'm a 49ers fan i've lived here for this is like year 16, so I, I like it when the Chargers win. Mm-hmm. I've been selling Chargers stuff like crazy. Mm. I sold a beanie for $45, like $44.99. I sold a, and I'll share this another time, a throwback jersey uh, for $200. I sold another jacket for $100. I sold a crusty old <laughs> Chargers at for twenty five dollars. I so, I just I, I just keep. I would say every other day except for today that I have no sales. Yeah. I have sold Chargers gear, nice, and I've sold an Eagles jersey because they're also in the playoffs. Hmm. And so, just keep an eye. I mean, I oh, I sold a Phil Rivers jersey two weeks ago. It was a kids one for like fifty dollars in Bonanza. Really? Yeah. So, keep an eye because. You know, I'm not saying like now, like go flood, you know, but it doesn't hurt to just make sure you're aware that like, hey, these are the teams that are in the playoffs for the NBA or in the World Series or whatever it is. And go, you know, if I see these, I'm going to research them because sometimes, you know, you look at jerseys and you're just like, eh, like because they all look the same. Right. right. But if it's it could be like a, a player that isn't that well known, but if they're on that team that is in the playoffs, there's a certain fan out there that really likes that player and they want that. Or it could be a jersey that that player used to play for that team, but people are still willing to wear that jersey when they go to that sporting event. Mm. What what specific, other than like players, like there might be some players that are more important than others, what specifically should I be looking for? Should our listeners be looking for when we're looking at jerseys? Is it is our brand... Is it style? Is it like what? What should I be looking for? I think brands. I mean, brands a big one. Like Majestic's a nice brand to look for. What about Reebok? I feel like I'm always seeing Reebok. Is Reebok kind I've of the sold, low end? I've sold Reebok stuff, but here's what you got to be careful. What I find is there's a lot of fakes out there, and I think okay. one of the ones that I get a lot of fake, a lot of fake, a lot of fake jerseys is is Reebok. Okay, and you can just tell by like how poorly like the Reebok logo looks on mm. the jersey. Right, but he, or the stitching. Or. And I might get in trouble here, but sometimes it's really hard to tell. Mm. Right? And, you know, I've had, for instance, I've had people DM me, not DM me, but message me like, oh, that, that jersey's fake. Mm. And then I go, okay, I'll investigate and I'll pull it. And then a few days go by, I'm like, you know what? It's really hard to tell. I'm just mm. going to throw it up there. And people buy it. So mm. sometimes people, like, they're not really concerned. And I'm not saying sell fake stuff. But you can't believe everyone that messages you and says something is fake. Right. Right. Because sometimes you might have another seller that has, and now I'm getting conspiracy, but mm. you might have another seller that has a similar item and, you know, they want to be the only, they want to be the only town. person. Yeah. Or sometimes you just have people that like think they're the authority on something. Mm. And I think there are certain things where it's like, okay, if it's a coach purse or a Louis Vuitton purse, right? If we want to go that far. Um, clearly there's there's a lot more skin in the game and you need to be certain but if it's if it's a twenty dollar item that you're selling the chances of like you i don't know it just doesn't it doesn't seem like it's like you said as serious right like if it's a quality thing and and for to the best of your knowledge it's real and you've done your due diligence i think you know don't send it off to an appraiser right no i wouldn't go that far i mean but do be careful i find that most of the times that I get, you know, 
like, hey, this is fake, this isn't authentic, is when people buy stuff at a low price. Mm. Like when people pay major money for items, I've never had a problem. Because those people that are dropping that money, most of the time they really know what they're they're buying. Mm. And so they're not going to come at you and say, hey, this is fake. Mm. Just something to think about. Yeah, interesting. How about your bolo? Um, man, I guess mine's going to be more specific. Um, I should have, I wish I would have stuck with I, the I threw theme some brands in there. Generic, that's true. Um, so m- maybe last update episode, my bolo was just fitness stuff, right? Okay. Which is good because I've picked up some nice fitness stuff for Amazon. Uh-huh. So Let me tell you good. a story. Okay. Have you heard of a, 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 a fitness tool or, or a piece of equipment called TRX? No. Okay. So it's like, they're just like straps. They're like canvas, like tie downs. Like imagine you'd use to like strap something on the back of your truck. Okay. Right? It's kind of like that with a handle on it. Okay. And uh, they're very expensive. Really? Very trendy. They're trendy for a while. I don't know if they're as big now. I have only found them twice, but the both times I found them, or the only time I found them was on the same day, two different garage sales. That's so wild. Yeah. And so I picked up both pairs and, um, they both sold within a week of posting them and there is that they sell for a lot of money, even used. They sell for how much did you buy them? Um, I paid five for one and 40 for another. Okay. Um, and the one that I paid 44 was a nicer one. So like workout bands, they're not bands. It's the thing is there, it's like a canvas strap. Like imagine like, like the yellow tie downs, like the ratchet. It's like that with a handle at the end and you just like hook it to your, like either a beam in your garage or to a door and you use the handles and there's like two of them and like you can pull yourself and it's like the most minimalistic piece of workout equipment. But if you're to buy, if you're to go online and type in TRX and gyms have whole TRX system set up where people can use the band, the, the straps. Um, yeah, they sell, they sell new for a couple of hundred dollars and used for up to like 150, anywhere from like 75 to 150, depending on which model. You're, you're selling. Wow. So yeah, if you see that, I mean, there it's, it's a simple piece of equipment that's very difficult to damage. So it's not like you have to worry about, and there it's small. It goes into like a box or a bag and easy to ship. So like you could do cubic priority. Yeah. I bet like you could use by pirate by ship. Six? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Maybe even smaller. Awesome. So TRX. TRX. Okay. I'll be on the lookout. Episode 33. Bolo time. Bolo, you go first. Oh, okay. What do you got? So I've really been trying to help people by not getting too specific on my bolo, mm. right? Because you hear a really specific one, and maybe it'll help, but I like being more generic these days just because it allows you to keep your eyes open on stuff. And I know this is going to be super generic, but uh, it, I'm even like going, should I share this this generic? But I got to tell you, like 90 stuff right now is fire. I think it's even more fire than it was a year ago. Mm. The reason I say this is because I've been selling like repop stuff, stuff that's not from the 90s, that's made to look like look the like 90s, it, yeah. and it's still selling for good money. Hmm. Right? Like I've had some North Face hats that look like they're 80s, 90s that I bought like at the outlets for like, I don't know, 8 to $10 that I'm selling for like 30 to 40 bucks a pop. Wow. And they're not even like vintage. They're just vintage looking. Mm. Do you um, put that in the in the title, vintage looking? No, because that's like key, keyword spamming. I'll put retro look, but I won't put vintage. No, I, I don't want to throw people. That's like, I think it's a little a little shady. Mm. You can see that. You know, it's kind of like the people that we talked about. Two Not podcasts. Disneyland. Yeah, which people Not were Disney. saying that's keyword spamming. Yeah. So you don't want to do that. But, you know, I, I just sold a pair of like Reebok pumps that were vintage and I'm really bummed because I sold them for, I, I want to remember, like $85. And I listed them a while back. And I probably could have sold those now for like 140 100 Like the prices are going up. I could have sold them mm. for 140 150 So it's it's only gaining more popularity. And again, Slobby's World, <laughs> what a title. Like if you look at that show, like all that stuff, like is 80s and 90s. Mm. So you know, those of you that were born, like, you know, I was born in the late 70s, early 80s. Like, I would definitely remember in your childhood what you had. Like, that stuff Ooh, is probably money now. Bring Pogs back. I don't know about Pogs. I know some people have sold Pogs. Pogs, I don't think Pogs has that much value yet. No, I'm sure they don't, but I just I just think they need to come back. Have we mentioned, have I mentioned soaps on, the, on this? Soaps? Yeah, okay, so... 
you know how Heelys came back? Yeah. Like Heelys were big when I was younger and then they were away and now they're back again. The other thing that was really big when I was younger and they, I don't think they've come back yet. They were called soaps. I think that was the name of the brand of the show. Like ski shoes? Kind of, but they had on the on the on the the the, the sole of the shoe, there was like a little cave-in part where you'd have like a plastic or a metal uh, plate, really? and you could use those to grind on sidewalks. So like the yeah, edge like of the sidewalk. Shoes. Yeah, but it, you you didn't use like a skateboard. It was just the shoes you used. They had the plate on it, and so some of them were plastic. You can get metal ones that sparked. Like when you would you know run, you just run as fast as you could, and you'd grind with just your shoes on um, on the sidewalk. But anyways, um, yeah, I think those need to come back. And if, if they're not back yet, um, we need to find a way to bring them back. No, but they're money. So that, that's all, I just looked it up. And I'm looking. Let's look at the soles real quick. So the soles themselves are going to tell us, like, if they're money. But, yeah, I mean, you're took, – you're, wow. I'm looking at used soaps going for 100 to $200. Okay, so that is my bolo. What? Wait, wait, you can't you can't jump on my bolo and have your own bolo. I, yeah, sure, why not? Oh you were generic. I was specific. Soaps. Okay. Well how do you spell that? I don't is it just it's, it's soap. Soap shoes. S-O-A-P shoes. Soap shoes. But it's funny you bring that up. And and did you notice that I went to the same Salvation Army from your YouTube video that you made? Yep. Did you see what I picked up? I know you got a bunch of of Reef. They're reef shoes. R-E-E-F. Okay. Yep, yep. From the 90s, dead stock. Mm. They're like surf, skate shoes, kind of, they're not like soap, so you can't like grind on them. But I've sold, like, I, I, it's crazy because we, I got them for 15 and I listed them for like a, over $100. Wow. And I just sold a pair for eight, over 80 bucks. It's like a best offer. Nice. So again, I'm saying like vintage 80s and 90s, like definitely money. I, and I'm looking, look, first generation soap grinder. Okay, so it's it's I guess it's a tool they use with the shoes. Twenty five dollars for just like that little tool. Wow, just the key. Look at that, two hundred forty. This is amazing. Okay, so yes, so I I get it. I think it's fair. I think it's good that we have this combo bolo for this episode. Yeah, episode thirty (laughs) five. The bolos of the week. Bolo. (laughs) You should just record yourself saying bolo. And then, like, repeat it, like, bolo, 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 bolo. <laughs> Okay. So, I, okay, I'll share with you my bolo of the week. So, bolo of the week. This should be bolo of the two weeks, because we always do these every two weeks. What do we call it, bolo of the week? It just sounds better? Just, just bolo. Our bolo. Our bolo, okay. Is, and this is going to be, I, again, I keep saying this, but the right kinds of Vans and Converse shoes. So, let me give you some context. Because you're like... <laughs> Back with the vague stuff. No, Here's but, my bolo. Profitable items. <laughs> no, we're not going... I just want to help people because if I get too specific, you may overlook something. So, I'll give you some examples here. So, there's two ways to look at it. One is vintage, right? So, if anything says made in the USA, if it's a Vans or a Converse shoe, pick it up, mm. right? Because that means it's probably vintage. I mean, do your research... But, for example, at Goodwill, I bought three sets of Vans shoes. Uh, I want to say it was like two years ago. Did I share this already? I don't think so. Okay. So three pairs of Vans shoes, and they had the box with them, and they all said made in the USA. I bought each of them for $12.99. First pair sold for $340. Second pair, I think I sold for like $200 something. And the third pair, I still haven't sold. But, Mm. man, I never, you know... I never even would have thought of that. I, I saw it somewhere else. So it wasn't like I figured this out on my own. Like somebody had said, keep an eye for, you know, made in the USA shoes. So I'm sharing it with you guys again. And the same thing with Converse. Like if you find, you know, some parcel, it says parcel on it and it says made in the USA, like it could be money. I've also sold newer van shoes that were like limited edition, like a certain event van shoes were made for. Mm. And I've sold them. So there was one that was like, there was a surfing event in Hawaii and it had that event like in the insole. And I bought the shoes for 10 and I sold them for 150. Mm. Right. Or there's co- collabs, right? Collabs always help. So I know so quick, ship quick. They had just uh, shared, they sold a pair of Dr. Seuss vans uh, for I think I want to say it was like close to $70 wow. that they picked up for like $10. I sold a pair of Jungle Book vans that were like dirty and, and not great. I picked them up for like I think four bucks and I sold them for $50. Yeah. And I picked up, it's interesting, I picked up, it was either Superman or Spider-Man vans 
And at that same thrift store were like three other superhero vans. And I was looking at the comps at all three and only one of the ones with the, you know, Spider-Man or Superman was actually worth money. So even then you have to be, do yeah, your you got to do your research still, but it's just some, one of those that, you know, even if, even if they're dirty, like still research it. Cause you know, due to the value. So, Oh, here's another one. One was like, uh, all the, um, female villains from Disney movies. So like Ursula mm. and I, I don't know what the one in Snow White is called, but you know, all, all of those characters, uh, you know, Cruella DeVille mm-hmm. and so on. Like a pair of those vans I sold, I want to say it was, or maybe I didn't sell it. Maybe it's still, I can't remember. But I looked at comps and I picked up for five and they're selling for like 60 to 70. Wow. Some are selling for like a hundred. So just something to keep an eye out for. No. That's our bolo. So what do you got? What do I got? Um, I've been learning a lot about uh, female genes. Um, okay. So that's been. I find that's a tough, tough one for me. Yeah. I mean. And it's not something I feel like I'm, I'm definitely not an expert in. Um, but it was interesting when I, when I married my wife, one of the first things she said, um, was I don't like, I don't spend a lot, like a ton of money on makeup. I don't have, I don't spend a lot of money on jewelry, but I, but I buy nice clothes, right? Like I buy, okay. and buy name brand clothes. And so yeah, at least she was up front. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So, I mean, I knew that going in because I didn't, that was not something like I was very much like, I'll get my clothes at like the little like store that you drive by and it's like, Hey, they got shirts for $5, nothing over four ninety nine, Right. And like, that's where I like buy my shirts and signs of a reseller. Yeah. Well, kind of like our upcoming podcast. Yeah. So I, I always bought super cheap and I've over time I've learned like, okay, there's definitely a big difference in quality of, of, of certain clothes. But, um, so I knew when I started selling a few brands, right? Like there were, there were some brands that she wore. She, she wore Hudson jeans. She would wear seven for all mankind jeans. She would wear miss me jeans. And, and so when I would see these, like I would, I'd pick them up and I've learned even more about them. Like, um, I would pick up, so seven for all mankind, uh, do pretty well for us. We sold quite a few of those. And I was at a, a thrift store and I'm like, Oh, here's some, some seven jeans. Cause people a lot of times just call them seven jeans. And I pick them up and I bring them home. And she goes, Oh, those are seven jeans. And I was like, yeah, it's good. Right. Like I got them. And she's like, no, no, no. Oh. Th- those aren't seven for all mankind. Those are seven. That's like a nice. knockoff, like, like, like a, like a Walmart brand. So you're all like, I was proud. super stoked. Like that. I got yeah. some seven jeans and it was like, Nope, those are so seven for all mankind. And then the one that, that has been doing really well for us is miss me specifically. So my bolo is going to be miss me jeans with all of the rhinestones intact. So like miss me jeans oftentimes have like rhinestones, like on the back pockets, um, and different designs, maybe sometimes on the front pockets. And I've, I find them often at thrift stores or garage sales. And there's like big chunks of the rhinestones that are missing that have come off. Will people still buy with the rhinestone missing? They will. You have to disclose it all. And depending on how, if there's a few missing, yeah, but it's really easy to just see that tag and be like, Oh sweet. And the pants might look good, but there might be like a whole little like quarter size section of rhinestones that are missing. And that, that decreases the value quite a bit. So if you can find one that's got all of the rhinestones, um, in intact, uh, Pick those up. They're worth it. Okay. Episode 37. Bolo. Is that is that our bolo? Uh, That's our intro? sound effect. Bolo. Bolo. Okay, I'll go first in mine. All right. So, no, no, wait. Yeah, bolo. Okay. Bomber jackets. I know it's generic, but I think pretty much any bomber jacket that is leather, you will sell for money. So, I posted an IG today, one of the bomber jackets that I picked up. In the middle of a Saturday afternoon, it was 50% off, and it was at our special store. No one had picked it up. That was overwhelming. And I'm going to have more. I'm going to go sourcing tomorrow at certain stores that are having deals, and I'm just going to have more of a death pile, but I can't miss out on those deals. Those deals don't mean anything until you get them, uh, until you get them listed. I know. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Getting a little defensive there. No, I just... I just feel very overwhelmed right now. Like it, it's it's rare for me to feel overwhelmed. Like I've I've gone through a lot of stuff in life. Yeah. So what you know? So when I feel overwhelmed, I must be overwhelmed. So it's all good. Though. Hang in there, man. We'll, we'll get through. Hang it. We'll in get there. through it. All right, bolo. Is that is that our bolo? Uh, That's our intro? sound effect. Bolo, bolo. Okay, I'll go first in mine. All right. So no, no, wait. Yeah, bolo. Okay. Bomber jackets. I know it's generic, but I think 
pretty much any bomber jacket that is leather, you will sell for money. So I posted an IG today, one of the bomber jackets that I picked up in the middle of a Saturday afternoon. It was 50% off and it was at our special store. No one had picked it up. Thousands probably have passed it up. And I, I, I put an IG post so you can read about it. And I picked it up for $10 and I sold it for over 200 But that's not the only one. I found another one, an L.L. Bean. Okay. It was called like a Flying Tigers one. Never heard about it. Never seen it. It was a bomber jacket. I listed it for 300 and I sold it for over 200 This was a while back. I have sold multiple bomber jackets through my whole reselling career, I guess, quote unquote. And I can't, you can't go wrong with bomber jackets. Even like little kid ones, like for, remember that movie Planes? Yep. Right? It was like the cars. Mm. <laughs> like even I've sold these, those even little, little bomber jackets for money. So it's crazy. If you come, come across a bomber jacket, like, you know, do your research, but you may have, you know, some nice ROI coming your way. So that's my bolo. That's a good one. I like it. What'd you get? Ah, this one's weird. I don't know if, I don't know if this even counts. I mean, it does. I have never found it yet but okay. i think i think this works because having having a young son now i'm starting to like learn about like toys and what toys okay. are the thing and it's relatively new i mean they've been around for a couple of years but um i what i've noticed with kids stuff is kids have toys for a certain number of years and then they get end up at garage sales right because they grow Choo-choo. out of this the yeah. sale. so what's coming out right now or popular right now is going to be in the next year what starts showing up at garage sales Huh. So good point. I think they're called it's like Tengu, I think is the brand, but they're they're wood blocks that have magnets in them. They're really nice, like really nice. Okay. Super nice. Super expensive. If you buy them new in the set, it's like I feel like the new Lego, as it were. Huh. And they are for like a for a box of like 20 pieces or 24 pieces, you're looking at anywhere from like 30 to 60 dollars new. Wow. And people are buying them like they buy Lego. So, cause like each kit, like you can use them for anything. They're like, you know, like little, they're not even that big. They're just wood blocks, but they have magnets. So they stick together and you can, you've got more maneuverability and they're painted with like a cool, like kind of like a plasticky chalk paint. And they look really neat. I've, I've ha- handled them a few times. Um, I've started to see similar things at garage sales, like little magnet connector things. And I'm just like, you know what? In the next year or two, these Tengus are going to start showing up. And when they do, I look on eBay already because it's like, maybe I can get a bunch on eBay. They're priced very high, not much less than they are new. So really, if you find something like that, they hold their value. What are they called? Tango? Like I think the dance? It's, no, it's like T-E-N-G-U. I think. I could be wrong. It could be some a totally different thing. But it um, yeah, maybe look it up, make sure that's the right, the right, uh, that I'm not giving something else. There's a reason why this MacBook's here. Yeah. Yeah, no. no. So how'd you spell it again? T-E-N-G-U. Okay, well, I'm sure our listeners are savvy and we'll find them. But we found them. They are Tegu. Tegu. T-E-G-U. There it is. I was close. So hopefully before people went sourcing, they heard the last 30 seconds and they didn't go looking for Tengu. But look at them. They look kind of cool, right? Yeah, they're decent. (laughs) I mean, they look like blocks to me, but but they're magnet and they like the way they stick together. It's really cool. Okay, it's so, super neat. And it, and these are used up pieces I'm looking for. And yeah, they they come off like they're a decent amount. Nice ROI on some of these. So yeah, that's definitely a bolo. And here's the thing: if you're listening to this podcast five years from now, okay, you probably need to do the research because yeah. maybe they're not the same. Forty two pieces for a hundred and five dollars, unbelievable. Yeah, and it's used. It's it's yeah I, okay. I will keep an eye for that. Keep an never, eye out. You know, I've probably seen these and just going like, ah, oh, they're just wooden blocks. Yeah, they're like, really cool. Interesting. All right. So there's your bolo. Bolo. Of the week. Episode 39. Let's get to our bolos of the week. So bolo of the week for you. Yeah. Um, so my wife works for a, 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 company that helps supply like maintenance and facility stuff. And and she does the marketing for them. Uh, But occasionally they have products that they sell or send out. Like we're talking like masks, like they don't have, it's not like they sell out of a store, but like they sell to, you know, hotels and 
places like that. So um, sometimes items get discontinued and they have some leftovers that were like used as like display models. And um, so she was able to pick up some some items that were discontinued. The, the, their company was just going to get rid of them. Um, and we were like, maybe they'll sell, maybe they won't, right? Like, but it doesn't hurt. They're we're picking them up for free. And we've already sold almost all of them. And it was pretty cool because it was items like exit signs, um, paper towel, like faucets, like a random type of faucet, uh, certain lighting units that are like very specific to like a model of light. And what we realized is if you own a building that has exit signs, one of your exit signs goes out, you probably want to buy the exact same exit sign to replace it with. So that way all of the exit signs in your building are uniform. They all look the same. They they have the same or same thing with different lightings or different, just different fixtures inside of buildings. And so what we kind of were thinking about with that is how many times like you're at a thrift store, you're at a garage sale and you see fixtures or you see things and you're like, eh, don't, you know, probably not money in this. But if it's a discontinued item, it's worth picking up because um, if somebody's faucet goes out and they own a hotel or a building, they're going to want to replace it with the same thing that they're all like, right? So, so obviously do your research. Don't just buy random fixtures, but if it's good in good condition and it's something that's, you know, from a commercial like building might be worth picking up. So I would say commercial fixtures, um, that are, if you can find out that they're discontinued, that that's even better. But, um, so yeah, that would be my, my bow low. Am I, am I being recorded right now? I thought I'd put us What's on the up? IG Live yeah. just to let people know a new episode. Anyways, all right. So we'll turn this off right now. Hey, so, no, I agree with you. Here's the thing. I Here's another. I had same scenario. Like, my friend who works construction management had told me, you know, that there was a, a building that there were items that were left over. They didn't, you know, they were trying to figure out what to do with it. They had places to go, but they, you know, just to contact certain people. So they contacted me and I showed up and... Yeah, I picked up a ton of office equipment where people bought it not because, you know, it was anything special. It's just they wanted to replace the same item. Yep. So that is definitely a bonus. Yeah, commercial. Look for look for commercial fixtures. Obviously, do your research. But when something is discontinued, value goes up because they can't get it from the manufacturer anymore. Okay. Nice. All right. What about you? What's your bolo? So I don't know what the deal is lately, but Southwest, like, items, like, they're be, they're they're going up in price. So let me give you like, an example. Like the, like the airplane company, the flight? No, 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 no. You got eBay open on your mind. No, I'm talking about like oh, I see Southwest saying, like, pattern. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So now we've always, I mean, most resellers that have been around for a while know that those kind of items, you know, do bring in good money. But it seems like, so for instance, Pearl Snap shirts. So for a while, the, the you know, the market was pretty good. Like you could sell a Pearl Snap for 40 to 50 bucks, even ones that weren't like super brand name, right? But then the market like dipped and you could maybe get 10 to 20, right? Well, that market's creeping back up again. And so for me, it's, this is more of a general one, but I'm going to, I'll tighten it up a little bit uh, to cowboy boots. I have not been able to hold a cowboy boot. Let's just throw it out there for more than a month. I only have one pair right now that I haven't been able to sell. And it's because it's missing insoles, but every single pair of boots I have, Listed within, I don't know, last six months has sold and for good money. Are these like specific like types of? No, no, no. I'm going to get. So material is everything when it comes to boots. So if you have like the ostrich uh, kind, so they have like little bumps on them. Like you just go to eBay, just type in, you know, go Tony Lama ostrich boots and see what comes up. Okay. Or snake skin or lizard skin. Like. Those boots I have sold over and over again for money. And my most recent sale was a pair of vintage Tony Lama boots. Uh, and it was so vintage that the date was actually written there. They were made in 1967. And I sold them for like $110. And I paid, I want to say I paid 20 for those. I sold another pair of Tony Lamas that I paid $10 for. They're uh, black snake skin boots. And I sold those for, I, I want to say $130. So... Keep an eye for boots. I used to not like boots because with boots, it's very particular. Like you pick them up and you have to like, you know, put material inside so they stay straight up. And then some people want the calf measurement. Some people want different measurements. And so you can look all those up. You can Google, you know, how to measure cowboy boots. But I got to tell you, it's been fire lately. So 
be on the lookout, especially if you live in those areas that sell, you know, in San Diego, we don't get a lot of cowboy boots, but in certain parts you do, right? You know, in, in certain parts of the county. And so I've been in those parts of the county, picked some up and listed them and made some good money. So that's, a, that's my bolo. That's so. good stuff. Episode 41. Bolos. Bolo. What do you, what do you, what do you got for your bolo? Um, have you heard of all bird shoes? I have not. So how do you spell that? Um, uh, all a L L okay. space bird, all bird. Okay. All bird. I got, if you're watching on YouTube, there's, what's it look like right there? <laughs> Where Wait, those kind of look like, uh, like some under armor kind of Yeezy kind of. Yeah. They kind of have easy look. They're, they're a hundred percent wool. Um, they have, they have ones that are made out of wool and then they have ones made out of, um, like a tree fiber also. The wool ones I can speak for are by far the most comfortable pair of shoes I've ever worn in my life. Anybody who's worn all birds will tell you the same thing. You like comfortable clothing. Comfortable, but also like... Like your mountain pants or whatever what brand is that? These are Prana. I yeah. know. These Every are. time I go like thrifty now, I see those pants and I... You do? Yeah. Oh, man. So they're my size. You should, you? you should buy them for me. Okay. Uh, it's my favorite brand. He didn't say call them. Yeah. He just said buy them for me. Yeah. Um. So all birds, right? Like... It's one of those things like they're not new, new. They've been out for a little while. So a lot of people I know wear them. Um, but it's one of those things where it's like it's super trendy right now. Like all of the hipsters, you know, it's kind of like that's the style. All the bikes. Um, they really like all birds. So I'm like, you're not going to find all birds at like thrift store anytime soon because they're still. Let me take a look again. Yeah. I just, I've, I've never seen these shoes. So if you're listening to the podcast, they literally are just gray, plain shoes. They're really hard to tell. Is there a logo on the sole? Uh, it, it's oh, there's a logo on the tongue. Okay, you just got to look these up because honestly, I would have never even like looked at these twice. Yeah, they got different. There's different colors. They only have like three different styles um, of shoes and they sell them for men and women. Uh, they are so nice. Anyways, I didn't think I'd find any anytime soon. And at the thrift store today, I found a pair of Allbirds in my size. Um, the only thing it was they're missing shoelaces, which I already looked on the Albert website and you can buy shoelaces for them. Uh, I was able to buy them for $3 and they're $100 pair of shoes. Really? So, is the resale value $100? Uh, resale used is probably like 60, 65. Still nice. It's really nice. And because they're my size and, and different colors than the ones I have on, I might keep them. They, they look good. They, 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 they do. They look just fine. They look nice, but they're so comfortable. Now, are they, were these at the Salvo? No. At a GW? No. Nope. Oh, okay. I'm not going to ask you anymore. I know what yeah. you're talking about. All right, moving on. <laughs> Sharon, uh, I'll share my bolo now. That's a good bolo. It's a good one. So if you see all bird shoes, um, and just go on the website. Go and look up all birds. You'll see they've got a couple of different styles. Um, they are extremely comfortable. One of the benefits of them is they're machine washable. I know you can wash a lot of shoes, but these ones are it's like cool. clothes, right? Like it's because they're made out of I wool. I wish my so Gary V's were machine washable. Did you buy those? The white ones? The clouds and dirt? I can't, I can't get the white clean. You own a pair? Yeah. They're awesome shoes. They're actually really comfortable. All right. I know. My boy Gary Fan V. boy, man. Wow. Well, come on. They're good shoes. I am going to buy the black pair here soon. All right. Hey, Bolo. So, again, I always try to give you things to look out that aren't too specific so you don't miss it. So, it's that time to look for obnoxiously loud shorts. So, what I mean is super bright, super crazy. And I'm not saying pick them up. What I'm saying is when you pick them up, I'll, I'll just drop two brands you should take a look for. So a, lot, a lot of you know about the first brand, Loudmouth, right? Golf shorts. Have you ever come across a Loudmouth? Uh, I haven't noticed. Um, maybe. Okay. So they're super loud. They're obnoxious. Like they have some design. They're colorful. Like they go for good money, especially this time of year. Right now that we're entering spring and summer, like they go for good money. Just check out comps on eBay. The other brand is, I'm going to destroy this name. It's like Vilebrickin or something. V-I-L-E-B-R-E-Q-U-I-N swim trunks. Hmm. They're also loud, but. I mean, these are swim trunks that are used that go for like 50 bucks. Wow. So I would never, ever put a pair of used trunks on. Yeah, I don't think I would either. That's just, I just don't go there. But I would definitely pick them up and resell them. All day. All day. 
yeah. all day. So keep an eye for obnoxiously loud shorts because this time I just sold an obnoxiously loud pair of polo shorts. I think I picked them up at the outlets for like, I don't know, seven bucks. And I sold them for, I want to say I sold them for like 50 or so bucks. It was good. Good stuff. Episode 43. Right. You want me to share my hats bolo? Yeah. Give me give me the bolo. Like, teach me right now how to well, do hats. Okay. And you've told me before, so I'm just a bad student, but. All right. So, and again, some might disagree. Let, let us know in the comments. Maybe you do something different. But the first part, you're going to go like, this is crazy. What I'll tell you this. If you go to a place and they have, let's say, 20 or 30 hats, right? And we'll, we probably need to talk about this in our garage sale podcast. And they're older hats. Like they're not newer or they're new with tags and they're like, there's something different about them. Buy them all. Buy them all and buy them all for cheap. Right? Because if you buy one, they might say, oh, it's a dollar hat or $2, right? Uh, thrift store around here, they're like 5 to $7. So I don't really buy a lot of hats at the thrift store. But at garage sales, definitely money. Right? This was, this was at the rummage sale under a dollar piece. And you want to look for hats. You know, it's funny because some people say sports teams. I do better on non-sports teams hats than I do on sports teams. Oh, wait, yeah, on sports teams hats. All right, so number one, I know this is the market isn't what it used to be, but mesh trucker hats are still money. Like, mm-hmm. I still sell. You know what I mean with the yeah. mesh? And you got to make sure that the foam isn't, like, destroyed. But I, if it's vintage and the foam is destroyed, you still might get money because somebody might want it for a display. The other part is... It has to be like unique. Like it can't be just a random hat that somebody can find. So I'll give you an example. So one of the hats I just sold for $30 that I picked up for, I think like 20 cents was Cactus Jack Southwest Kirkery hat. Okay. Right. So there wasn't like, it wasn't like McDonald's or Burger King, which those hats can still make you money. Right. But this was just, I had, but it was mesh. It was trucker. It was kind of old school looking, right? So you got to picture like a person going on spring break that wants to have that unique hat and look cool at the beach. Mm. Does that sound weird? It's weird that people do that. Or, or or the or the or the hipster that wants that unique hat that nobody else can get. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? I do. I'll have to tell you my hat story later on in life. Okay, yeah. so. I sold I sold that for 30 bucks, right? That wasn't a big deal. So that's what I look for. Or I look for hats that are new with tags that people can't just go into a retail store and buy. Right. So I sold that Marine hat, right? So if you're let's say you're in the Marines or you know, you retired, you're out of the service, like you can go online, right? But maybe you'll go to eBay because you think you'll get it cheaper, right? And so sometimes people are willing to pay up. So I sell some of the hats I sell a lot. This is a bolo and I don't sell for a lot of money, but I sell consistently are like, you ever seen those hats that have like a, a Navy ship and has like the title of the ship. Like yep. I sell those hats. Nice. Right. Because P- that was part of like something sentimental, like they were part of a group or part of that squadron and they want that hat. Mm. And again, I always say this about hats. If you can pick up a hat that you can put a lot of good keywords, mm. it's worth a pickup. Right. So for this one, it was easy. I could put mesh trucker snapback hat. I could put cactus jack Southwest cookery. I could put recipe. I could put, I could put food. Like there were keywords I could put. So you got to look at hats. They can put keywords in. Okay. And now I'll give you a sports team hat. Go ahead. Are you going to say something? I was going to say we're, our battery's running oh, low. Man, so we, we just got to gotta tighten it up. We're letting people know the episode's ending. We, we should never do that. <laughs> So, okay. Anyways, I saw the Padres hat that was given away 30 years ago. It was like a bank hat, but it was like one of those giveaway hats. Well, you can't get that anywhere. You can get a new era hat, but can you get the specific hat that was sentimental to somebody somewhere? So just keep an eye. That's the bolo. It's good. That help? I like it. It helps a little bit. Okay. <laughs> everything looks unique to me at first, so I have to... It's like anything. I'll the show more you, my, the, my hat collection. The more, the, the more you do it, the more you... You get an eye for it, I think. So I just need to take that jump. And again, you I have a lot of loser hats too that I haven't sold in a while. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of the bulk buy. And you know, if you, you spend help ten, a few work. Yeah, if you know. spend ten and you make three hundred and you still have twenty that didn't I mean, whatever, if you didn't then sell, still worth it. Yeah. What's your bolo? Um, Sperry Topsiders. Oh yeah. Those are back, huh? Man, I've sold so many of those. So that went up. I used to buy a lot of those mm-hmm. and then the market like 
I think they were going for like half of what I used to sell for. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if they're anywhere near where they were at their peak, but, but they, they sell. sell quickly. Okay, that's good. So. And so sometimes they're called boat shoes, mm -hmm. right? And if you can get the gold cup ones, did you ever come across the gold cup ones? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Okay, it'll say gold cup. They oh, look nice. They're oh. like the more bougie kind of mm -hmm. Sperry Top Ciders. Those are money too. I'll be on the lookout for that. So Bolo, Sperry Top Ciders, Double Bolo, Gold Cup. Gold Cup. There you go. Episode 45. All right, let's go to Bolo's real quick. So what's your Bolo here? Bolo. Um, so I, I may have, have mentioned something like this before. I don't think so. But a um, friend of mine that I work with uh, gave me and my wife this really cool hiking backpack that my son can sit in. Oh, yeah, I right? think you mentioned that. Did I? Um, so <clears throat> it's super awesome. Like It's a really, really, really nice one. And we use it all the time. And I was at a garage sale a while back, and I saw one that was not as nice. And it was basically just a frame that a kid can sit in. And I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, I'm going to buy it. It looks like there's, like, I made a ton of money on it, right? And I sold it local. Nice. I sold it, I think I sold it for like $50 or $75. I don't know, something stupid like How that. How much did you pay for it? Like three. Nice. Right? So it was, like a, it was really good. It was easy. Um, I've found two more since then. Awesome. Always find them at garage sales. And they're typically in okay condition, right? That and um, bicycle, um, like the car trunk bicycle racks, I often see those too in pretty decent condition and people are always willing to get rid of them for really inexpensive. And the reality is a lot of people buy those kinds of things thinking they've got these grand ideas like I'm going to ride my bike all the time or I'm going to go hiking with my kid all the time and they do it once or twice and then they never do it again. Yep. So these are like almost never used. They sit in a garage, but because other people know that, I think the used market for those types of things. So like the car bike rack holders, the kid hiking stuff is people are willing to buy a second hand because they're not sure if they're going to use it that much either, you oh, know? Yeah. So because there's some people who only use it once and then are willing to get rid of it, I think the second hand market for that is really high. Um, I typically go local with those things. Uh, just because they're they're big, they're hefty. I don't want to deal with shipping them. I probably could, probably could list them. I think you you have a great point with local. I think especially in San Diego, where there's a lot of people who like to go mm -hmm. to hike or go wherever. Like I haven't done that in a while, but there was a point in time like I would sell like Camelback ones with the frames. I mm -hmm. would sell McGregor ones. Like I definitely think that's a bolo. It's yep. a good bolo. Yep, especially because a lot of times, like I said, you'll probably find them um, relatively good condition unless you get to if it's somebody who used it a ton. Um, it's probably going to be all beat up and stuff, but that might be when your, your tip comes in to say, Hey, do you have anything else like this? No, I, but people will still buy the beat up ones mm -hmm. because they're just going like a one time hiking trip or something, or they're like a, a novice hiker and they don't, you know, they don't want to go out and spend big money at REI. And so they're willing to drop, you know, the 50 instead of the 200. Oh, nice. Bolo. That's my bolo. That's all right. Bolo. What's, what's your, uh, I think Kelty was the brand of the, the, the That's bags right. that I got. So. I remember those. It's been a long time. I got to get back in the local game. All right. So mine are sandals. Sandals. No, no. But okay. So I'll, I'll drop some. So we all know about Birkenstocks. And if you don't know about Birkenstocks, they still hold value. But please, if you source Birkenstocks, please listen for over 40 if they're in decent shape. Like they will sell for over 40. Don't let lowball people offer you and go, oh, those are messed up. I'll give you 20. No, because... A new pair will cost $100. So people are willing to drop 40 to 50 to 60 and even more. Uh, did I share my, uh, wasn't that a hustle of the week? The Birkenstocks that sold for over 100 mm -hmm. So, you know, th th those are some bolos. Okay. Now, Teva. Teva is another good brand. Okay. Keep an eye out for Teva. It's kind of like the, the cool brand. It still is. I think for the last two years, I've done really well on Teva sandals. How do you spell that? T-E-V-A. And then there's like Chaco sandals. Have you seen Chaco sandals? Mm -hmm. Like those do, those have good resale value. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's others I've missed, but keep an eye, especially now that we're getting a summer and more people are looking, you know, again, it's sometimes people just want the sandals for a certain trip. So they're not looking to pay full price. They just want, you know, that one that they could wear once or twice while they're out traveling somewhere and they're willing to drop the money on it. So that's our bolo. So keep an eye for those. That's good stuff, man. So uh, outdoor gear. That's our that's our bolos. Outdoor gear. We're getting to the summer, right? So 
you got you to switch. Sometimes you got to switch your mindsets, right? When you're getting into Q4, you might be moving towards toys and decorations. Uh, when you're in the summer, your your gears need to switch a little bit. 100%. I totally agree. Episode 47. All right, bolo time. Bolo? So I'm going to share this bolo, and it's a pretty well-known bolo, but some of you haven't heard. I wanted to talk about clogs. And it's not just Dansko, but Dansko, you know, you know about Dansko, right? No. Nope. Oh, you don't? Okay. So Dansko are usually like nursing shoes. Sometimes they're all black. They're, they're clogs. And sometimes they have like, the more interesting the design, the more they can go for. But man, I have not been able to hold on to Danskos. Like they'll sell and I will price them high. And I actually came across at a garage sale a few weeks ago, three pairs of, of Danskos uh, in box. They weren't new, but they were well taken care of. And they weren't clogs. They were just Dansko shoes. And I've already sold two out of the three for good money. And one of them was so desired that I listed it as the wrong shoe and the wrong color. And somebody still bought it. And then I told this is so good. I know. Okay. I know. I, I've been there. And it's, you know, and it's one of those things where, like, it's like the truck or, like, that one you knew, but you didn't know three seventy. No, no, no. I thought I thought I was gonna make like in my mind I was gonna be able to sell it for one fifty. By the time eBay fees and shipping, I'm like I'm probably gonna make like you know net hundred bucks on this item, maybe a little more. Like that's pretty good. Like this is awesome off one purchase. Three seventy five. Congrats, man. Thank you. That's awesome. All right, bolo time. Bolo. So I'm gonna share this bolo, and it's a pretty well known bolo, but some of you haven't heard. I wanted to talk about clogs and it's not just dansko but dansko you know you know about dansko right no nope. oh you don't okay so dansko are usually like nursing shoes sometimes they're all black they're, they're clogs and sometimes they have like the more interesting the design the more they can go for but man i have not been able to hold on to danskos like they'll sell and i will price them high and i actually came across at a garage sale a few weeks ago Three pairs of of Danskos uh, in box. They weren't new, but they were well taken care of. And they weren't clogs. They were just Dansko shoes. And I've already sold two out of the three for good money. And one of them was so desired that I listed it as the wrong shoe and the wrong color. And somebody still bought it. And then I told them that it was the wrong design and the wrong color. They're like, no, I still want them. And it was no big deal. So keep an eye for Dansko. I would say keep an eye for the non like work shoe looking thing. So nurses use them and other professions, but the better the design, I definitely would pick them up. I don't know what's going on with that market. The market ebbs and flows like a year ago, people were backing away, but now, you know, I was just, when I was in Wisconsin, one of my friends, she picks them up all the time and sells them on Facebook marketplace and she can't hold them longer than a day. Wow. wow. I've never even, never even looked for them. Now I know. Now I know the look. Yeah, you can. Once you find your first pair, you'll know what they look for. Yeah, Yeah. it'll be good. So that is my bolo. I I know I'm not going to kill the dance school market uh, because, you know, you still got to get out there. You still got to find them. And, hey, make sure you list them high because people will pay that price. Yep. It's good stuff. How about you? Um, This one's a weird one. I mean, I don't know if weird. It's very specific. Uh, We've talked a lot about Department 56, right? So we know Christmas items, Department 56, good brand. Um, found a few of them recently at garage sales and, and people have been charging a lot for them. Well, I, I found this like boxed, it, it wasn't even an nativity set, but it kind of looked like that, but it was like a, like a Santa Claus, like coming into the chimney type, like almost like you set up all the figurines village type thing, but big figures. And it was in a box and I didn't recognize the brand. Maybe, you know, this brand. Um, but I was like, I normally wouldn't spend time on this kind of stuff because I'm moving so quickly, but I'm like, I'm just going to look this up because it was the first garage sale I was at this morning. So I was there at like six, she was still setting up and I look at it and I look it up and I'm finding, I didn't find this exact one in the moment that I was researching, but I'm finding a lot of sets going anywhere from like $75 Mm. up to like $150. The brand is Grandeur Noel. Yep. So maybe Grand- once, maybe, maybe I've heard about it. Yeah. Grandeur Noel is the name of the, the company. And I was able to buy the box aster, all the figurines here. I didn't even like, open them up and check so they're all bubble wrapped and stuff inside. So I need to check to make sure they're all I'm good. I'm pretty sure if they bubble wrapped them. Yeah, they're, they're taken care of. You can kind of figure, you could tell people a little bit. Um, so I don't know exactly, I haven't done the research to find this exact one, but I, like I said, I'm finding sets going anywhere from like 70 to like 
over $150. I paid $3. And it seems like there's almost all of them are going for high prices. Like if you look at sold for the Grandeur Noel and they have some nativity sets, they have some like Santa Claus sets, they have some just individual figurines. Even the individual figurines are going for like $30 or $40. So yes. um, yeah, check it out, especially as we get closer to Christmas time, people might be selling stuff or because it's not Christmas time and it's summer, yeah, people might be now. like, yeah. So that's uh, that's my bolo. Yeah, so that's such a different like dance yeah. code, a grandeur noel. Grandeur noel. Bolo, grandeur noel. Grandeur. Episode 49. So, all right. So what bolos are we going to share? Bolo? What, what, what's your bolo? Um, okay. So I was at um, a thrift store and- A store that shall not be named? Uh, yep. Okay. Um, and I bought two bags of toys. And normally this store, the specific store that I'm at, like doesn't do toys in like the, the bags, like the clear bags, like lauded. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a couple of times they do. In fact, I, I bought a, a big bag of Beyblades there one time for like $4 and sold it for like $60 on eBay, which is great. So I always look at toys occasionally to see if they have, and they had two bags with toys in them. And one of the bags was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, like plastic figures. And I'm like, all right, my son's still a little young for this, but this looks like good plastic. And I couldn't really see through the plastic. Yeah. There's like, Like it felt nice with, with toys. There's like plastic. And then there's like good plastic. Like the good plastics is stuff that lasts a long time. Like it's solid. It's good. It's not chinzy. It's not going to break. It's like a toy that like, you know, it's going to be good for the next 10, 20 years. So this is like, I'm like, this looks like good plastic. Like I'll, I'll buy this, this, these toys. And if they sell, they sell. Otherwise, then, you know, my son can play with them. And then I get home and I look at the bottom of the feet and I see the brand and they're selling for like $10 per action figure. And there's like probably 15 or 20 in here. Yeah. And I paid, I think seven 99 for the bag. And then um, you, you remind me of Thriftzilla on, on Instagram. Like he's a toy guy. Toys are good, man. And then I bought another toy. And here's the bolo. Sorry. So wait, wait, wait. Oh, that's not. No, uh, that was the lead up to that. Oh, so I'm like, you're going to, you're going to tell me you're going to light it up or whatever. Oh, I'm going more. to, but, but the other bag that I bought were these things called magnetiles. Now. I thought we talked about those. Before. No, I talked, they, I talked about the Tegu tiles. Oh, Tegu tiles. Magnetiles oh, are different. Yeah, they're so different. But I bought these ones for $4.99. So look up the brand, Magnetiles. I haven't counted how many are in there, but I'm assuming it's at least 120 pieces. And the the ones with that many are going for like $75 plus on eBay. So Magnetiles are super colorful, kind of clear, magnetic, square, kind of flat pieces. They're square, triangle, um, rectangles, different. They kind of all collapse together because they're magnets. And if you see those at a garage sale or a thrift store, they're, they're those they're the kind of toys I feel like that toddlers and like slightly above toddlers mm-hmm. will play with. And then they're not interested in them anymore, but they're expensive, high quality toys. So okay. people are looking on eBay, right? Because rather than buying them new for $120 on Amazon, you can get them for $75 on eBay. Okay. So magnetiles, check it out. Be on the lookout. Interesting. I never really would. I, 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 those are one of the items that I probably would have just seen and go, eh, and just kept walking. Now, you know, look them up. Magnetiles. Nice. Okay. I, I, you know what I love about her bolos? They're always so different. Never know. Do you get what I'm saying? It's like a box of chocolates. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> anyway, so what are you looking forward to? What are you eating into your bolo? Oh, I, oh, did I not share my bolo yet? What's your okay. bolo? My bolo is translators. All right. Thanks for your bolo. So, <laughs> no, no. But what I mean is like those electronic, like whether it's Franklin or Merriam Webster or mm-hmm. whatever it is, look those up. So I don't know. I don't know if you caught my IG story about the garage sales this past Saturday. But my hustle, that could have been a hustle of the week, was I showed up at this garage sale and they had these two translators. And the only reason I'm sharing this is because it reminds me of this is something I haven't shared. So these translators, the guy's like, he thought, you know, is one of those, you know, like your guy that said, you can't sell those for more than 10 on eBay. Yeah. So this guy was like, I'll, I'll give him, I said, how much? He goes, 15 each. But if you buy both, I'll sell them. Uh, no, he said, what did he say? He said 20 each. But if if I buy both, I'll sell them for to you for fifteen each, and then I go, how about we do twenty for both? He goes, well, show me the money. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. So I pulled out my twenty, and I'm like, here you go. Well, these translators 
have a ranking in the 30s and on Amazon, used, by the way, and they each sell for $115, right? Bala bala. So Bolo definitely translate, And I've had translators and for who a who buys long- those now when you got a phone that does that? You, you know, know what? When we taught, didn't we have a lot of international students that use those? That is true. Right? Yeah. But part of that, I think, was because they weren't allowed to use their phones. Now they just but use the, their phones. Oh, it's just true. So, <laughs> so the school so should if go, you're a, so if you're for a, the sake of our bolo, the school should go back to canceling its yeah, all so, phones. So if you're a student at a school that doesn't let you have your phone, then you can buy ancient technology that does the same thing less yes. effectively. But I don't know. a lot know, of money. <laughs> I don't know why there's a market, but I will tell you, I was selling translators three, four years ago for, you know, 50 to 80 to a hundred bucks. So, if, and it depends, but you can pick them up at Garasha for $1, $3. These were nice. Like they had the leather case that came with them and everything, but definitely keep an eye for translators. You know, don't worry about taking out your phone and researching it. I mean, I, I did this in front of the guy and he was fine with it because he was researching on his phone and maybe he researched or I don't know what it was, but he thought that he was selling it for good money. So. It's all good. So keep an eye out for translators. Yeah, yeah. So remember, and not all translators are the same. Episode 51. All right, all right. Bolo. Bolo. All right, I'll go first this time. What you got for me? So look for rare bags that are only made at certain locations. <laughs> so let me give you an example. So this last bag I sold was a Frost River bag that I sold for 50 but Frost River bags are only made in Duluth, Minnesota, and they're handmade, right? So if you come across this, and it's very rare, they will sell for money, right? There's value to it. Um, also, have you ever heard of Hartman? Hartman is another good brand, H-A-R-T-M-A-N-N. And Hartman stuff sells for good money, but and pretty much all of it, even if it's worn, right? Because people are looking for certain styles. Now, that is not as unique as a frost river. But what I will tell you is when you find a unique brand, right, you want to make sure you look it up. Don't, you know, Harman is stuff that's like sold in Macy's, right? But it does cost money to make. Okay. So, and it doesn't mean that, you know, it only has to be made in the USA, right? Harman is, you know, pretty expensive stuff. And one of my biggest hustles of the week before we ever did the podcast was a Harman briefcase that I paid $2 for. And it was worn, but somebody wanted it because it was unique. It was hard to find. And they paid, I want to say I sold it for $200, right? So keep an eye for those items because, again, right, those are more the rare, right? So Jansport will still sell. There's other items that will sell, you know. So I gave you kind of two different things, but keep an eye because especially now, you know, that people need to travel and there's specific guidelines. And everybody has like the same old, same old. People want unique and they want different, right? So keep an eye. Episode 54. Sometimes it's worth it. Yeah, I know. Just something to think about. Yeah. All right, Bolo. Bolo. Yeah, I'll go first. What you got for me? Sewing kits. Yeah, that's a good one. (laughs) I've sold some of those. You have? Yeah. Like, uh, I think it's called Busilla. I don't know. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Know, be, right? Or dimensions mm-hmm. or there's a few. So they, they they can be needlepoint. They could be cross stitch. There's also cruel. Is I have no knowledge about how these function or work. I just know here. Here's the thing. They're long tail items. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not sharing a bolo that's going to sell right away, but here's why. And I shared this on Instagram before, but I'll share it again to our wider audience here. There's three reasons why I love these sewing kits. Number one, you can usually find them new and sealed, right? Because it's somebody picked them up. They weren't too worried about it. Like they just didn't get time, whatever it is. Number two, they sell for really cheap. Like I usually buy these for like 10 cents to 50 cents. Then on top of that, they are easy to ship. Like most of them go first class. And usually the way I ship these is I take a piece of cardboard and I fold it over and I tape all around and it still weighs first class and I ship it out. So, so I've sold like five sewing kits. I think in the last three weeks, I paid maybe 10 to 50 cents for each of them. And some have sold for 15, some have sold for 20, some have sold for 30. 
I've sold some on Amazon FBA. Really? Yeah, it's crazy. And, uh, you know, the Christmas ones go for more. But, uh, you know, listen, I got like 200 of them, okay? And it's not like these sell all the time. But 200 and I paid maybe 10 to 50 cents each. And, you know, when they sell, I'm They're making, easy to store. They're easy to store. Like, definitely worth picking up. Obviously, you do your research. I wouldn't say pick them all up. But, uh, hey, if, you know, if it's certain things that, like, you're like, hey, it's Christmas themed or it's it's themed in something that, you know, apparently people are interested in, definitely worth picking up. Yep. So that's my bowling. That's good. That's good. Um, all right. Yeah, I've sold some of those. You've actually told me about those back, Did back I really? in the beginning. Yeah. Um, yeah, those are good. They're, I, I like how easy they are to store. They're really inexpensive to pick up. So that's good. All right. Mine is mine's vague because I don't have like specifics. I, I've bought in a couple um, and I can't think of what their brand names are right now. But this one is is vague, but bear with me here. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Hobby level DJ equipment. Okay. Not professional level. I'm not talking okay. like picking up, and maybe th there's probably tons of money there too, but I'm not talking about picking up huge speakers and big old boards and stuff because that's going to be expensive to ship and test, and you really got to know what you're doing. Okay. But there are a lot of middle of the road hobby level equipment that people will purchase off Amazon or stores or wherever they, they buy it thinking that they're going to get into doing like, usually these are things that have a USB plug. That's one key that that's, that it's hobby level, right? That it's not plugging into big okay. mixers with big wires, but it's like, it goes into your computer and you got smaller boards. Usually they're a little bit lighter weight. I find with those types of things, people often buy on a whim because they think they're going to get into it, right? They okay. want to, they want to learn, they want to get you. into it and they buy it and they use it once or twice. And then it sits inside their, their, closet or whatever for months or years and then they realize i don't need this anymore right well the great thing is there's another person who's wanting to try out dj equipment right and so you can I, I see them all the time like little mixers and like little i found one just the other day it was like usb had two little turntables on it and it's actually a really nice unit they go for like 150 new uh, i picked up this one for i think i paid 15 dollars, and they sell for use like 65 to 70 dollars. it's pretty lightweight it'll ship easily um, and, you know, just thinking and, and it doesn't have to just be DJ equipment, but just think about things like that. Like, what are hobbies that people get into? They last in it for a few weeks no, that's a good point. and then they don't really use it. Now, if it's professional quality equipment, one of the reasons I'd hesitate is usually that stuff. You're only buying it if you're using it a lot and you have to know how to check if it's OK, because if someone's selling it, they've probably used it a lot. Yeah, right? I, I will tell you, I've picked up. Uh... I think it wasn't Technics, but it was it was turntables like professional DJ and the ones I picked up now, I picked mine up for like a hundred a piece and I flipped them for close to a thousand a piece. Okay, but they were pretty worn. I mean, they were like worn, yeah. <laughs> like needle was gone, like certain parts were missing, like it was using the club. But it's still worth looking into. But I would say maybe that was eBay calling us. Maybe maybe sorry about that. Oh, man, I thought I put it on silent. Okay. I wish it was a cha-ching instead. Cha-ching. Cha-ching. All right. So going back to that, you know, the big ones sell, but you're right. Like, I feel like, not that I got lucky, but the person that was selling it to me knew what they were talking about and they were willing to, like, educate me. Mm -hmm. Right? So I was willing to take the risk. But the hobby ones, you can get away with more because they're kind of easier to understand. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. They're They're... They're less expensive, so you're not putting out as much money up front. And the chances that people have thousands of hours of work on it is very low, right? Chances are, if they're selling it, it's because they don't use it. Or it's because they used it a, a, enough to decide that they wanted to get into it, so they bought more expensive stuff, and they've taken care of their equipment. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I feel like a lot of times, hobby-level stuff is the right type of stuff to buy for flipping, if you can, because it's they're usually not as worn. And if it is somebody who got more serious, they probably took care of it, right? So you're, agreed. You're, it's a good, it's a good entry level stuff to be. It's funny. Sure. I picked up a couple mobile audio recording, like you know, where you can put together tracks and stuff, right. at a garage sale. Nice. This past week, and it was a, it was a guy. Remember the train, major train haul? Yeah. I went back to his house. Nice. Like, and I knew it. Like the moment I showed up, I'm like, this is where I bought an N64, a bunch of games, huge Lionel train set, and I bought some. Audio equipment from him. I may be taking guitar lessons with this guy too. 
Oh man! So I don't know. It's, We're gonna have to have an extra episode but, every week where Alana just sits here and plays guitar for us. But uh, that's gonna be a while. But really nice guy, and he made me a deal, and I left my business card, and he has other audio equipment similar to what you're talking about. Uh, but uh, you know, I sold some pedals. You know. Anyway, so yeah, I agree.